Okay, this is what I've been waiting for. We've had, I believe it's been four days of ice fog, and this is the first time the sun's been out. It's just amazing. This will probably only last, I don't know, maybe till noon or so. The sun will melt this stuff and it's all gonna drop from the trees soon. It's not like thick glaze of ice. It's, uh, it looks like snowflakes if you get up close to it. You can already see some of it falling. But look off into the distance there. That's just insane. All right, I'm gonna get over there and work on the tractor today. But first, I'm gonna see if Izzy will walk again. Yeah, we'll get over to the edge of this yard and take a look at this stuff. Now you can see it in the, in the better light. This is probably the, the thickest ice fog or fog ice I've ever seen. Four days in a row with no sun and heavy fog. We'll go look at this prairie grasses here. I could feel the warmth of the sun on my back. Yeah, it's not gonna be long before this stuff melts. That is so cool looking. Where's your stick, honey? There it is. Prairie drop seed. That stuff got plowed flat. Wow, what an amazing view. I could look at this all day, but I have a dog that wants to walk. This way, honey. All right, we'll see if we get a turnaround again today. I know, I'm gonna throw it for you. I'm gonna try to throw it right past where you get scared. Nope, this way, honey. She already wants to go back. Izzy, come on. <sighs> All right, it's more beautiful up here anyways. We're just gonna walk up and down the road, throw on the stick, and then I'll get over there by the tractor. You big coward. Look at those cedar trees. Really cool. Yeah, you can really see the stuff falling in the light here. It'll be gone soon. All right, you little coward. Let's go do this. I'm down here taking pictures by the vineyard. Just gorgeous down here. But Izzy will not leave the end of the yard. Really bizarre. We're gonna try going the other way. She, uh, she goes up that way once in a while, all on her own. 
go take a look at the burr oak plantings and see if the ice has melted off of them a little bit yet. And then we will get to work on the Ferguson. Should be nice and toasty warm in there today with some sun hitting it. What is the big deal, puppy? All right, here's that first tree that I showed a couple videos ago. You could see this stuff is getting ready to fall off and that it's melting. You can see the drip down here. All right, well, I'll be able to spray this stuff pretty soon. This sure was beautiful while it lasted, but this will probably be gone today. Pretty much all of this ice should be gone today. Just came over here to check on my bigger trees. The first three here. Zero animal tracks around this first one. But we have them on the ground here. And they just follow the fence line. Nothing by this one. And it doesn't look like there's anything by this one either. That's real good. Yeah, a good deal of tracks. You can see them coming down the hill and then going up this way. They can just jump right over this fence, but they chose not to. Yeah, this tree looked so much bigger in the summer. I don't think anything's bitten off of it, but we'll be able to tell a little bit better when I spray the deer repellent on them which may be later today if this ice all melts off. Yeah, it's melting off pretty good right there. You can see it falling off all the trees. Okay, let's get to work. All right, I'm in the machine shed and I opened the door because it was a good deal colder in here than it is outside and I want to get the cold air out of here. If you touch these sidewalls, they're very warm to the touch. In a little bit, all the snow is going to melt off the roof and the sun's going to beat on the roof as well. And it's going to get fairly warm in here. So I'll probably have to close the door again and keep some of that heat in here. But I got to get at this sloppy oil leak back here. If you watch the earlier videos, I changed the oil in this, the hydraulic fluid, and apparently it's leaking out of the plugs. I'm going to have to put some kind of a seal on there at some point, but it's not happening now. So what I'm going to have to do is get all this stuff out of the way. I think I'm going to roll the tractor forward so I don't have to get in a really uncomfortable position. And then I'll get it cleaned up under there, roll it back a little bit, and then get back to work on this electronic ignition.
you can really hear the snow melting on the roof and hitting that ladder out there. It's melting real good. I got this all cleaned up and the cleaner I was using pretty much just froze instantly when I sprayed it on the floor. These floors are really cold. So I just put some more oil zorb on there and hopefully I don't step on that and slip and break my neck. Really, really slippery. All right, now I got to see if that nut I got here is the right one. This is what I found on the ground and I'm gonna guess it has that lock washer and if this isn't it I'm gonna have to go look elsewhere. I got a big bin full of miscellaneous nuts but I'm gonna get this coil on and hook it up. I believe this is my wire right here and then I'll get that electronic ignition in right away. Okay, I went and got my chair and my tools and my wiring diagram and a bunch of other stuff. And now I am finally ready to put this coil in and the cat jumps on my lap. So I'm going to pet this cat for a while and then we'll get the coil in. All right, the coil is in and I have this brown wire here. Where does that go? That goes, this is where the resistor used to be. I have it jumped as per the instructions from the coil slash electronic ignition maker. If that ends up being wrong, I might have to switch that, but hopefully not. And that runs to the ignition switch here. And I believe the terminal is, is marked coil. And see it goes right from the coil terminal through the loom and out to the positive on the coil. And I know the electronic ignition has a wire that comes through. Where is that? This gets taken out and it goes through that hole and over to the negative terminal. So now I got to take this out. I have a diagram right here. Um, and I just have it one, two, three, four. But that's not the firing order, but that's just the order I got to put it back in place. So number one is this one pretty much on the right. Two is down here. Three is up here. 
and four is over there. Now I just need to get my wires kind of matched up. I don't know about this distributor cap. The only thing I can see that marks it at all is it has a little, I'm not sure what the hole is for, but it's got a little hole there and a little notch down here. I believe there will be a notch in the case. So I just got to get this oriented right. So let's get this off, figure out the orientation, get this orientated right, and figure out which plugs are going to go to where, and then I'll put the electronic ignition in here. Okay, I'm going to pull these plugs and just lay them on the floor in that same order. That's one. Two, three, and four. And coil. Okay. There's that same hole, and that was at the bottom. So we figured out the orientation. Okay, it's a tiny little rotor. I'll just clean that up a bit. This is the dust cap. This kind of looks like original equipment. Again, I should probably clean this up. It looks like these grooves are filled with stuff. Okay, now I got to take the points and condenser out of here and replace it with the electronic ignition equipment. And I think my big screwdriver will work for that. This was replaced with metric stuff at some point, at least some of the stuff. Now this might have had metric to start with, I'm not sure. It's a Ferguson, but we're for, I think Ferguson's were made in uh, Canada, so maybe, maybe the metric is correct. All right, here is the electronic ignition. They don't look like much. And what they do, this fits over that post and it's supposed to use the original screw to screw in up there. But I gotta turn this eccentric. Uh, here we go. Right like that. And then I believe that was this bigger screw, which is really not long enough for this, but we'll see. Okay. Yeah, that's in there nice and tight. These are the other parts that come with it. It's got an end 
for each of these. These both go out the the hole that the that the condenser, the little terminal that the condenser had. Those go through there and it's got a little rubber boot for it, which is nice. And then it has a ring end for both the wires. I gotta consult my diagram to see where these both go and I got to get them through that boot and stuff. And then it had this. I'm not sure if that's a, if that's an extension. But I'm going to have to go read the instructions on this. I left the instructions in the house, but I believe it's going to go on there before the... No, maybe it can't. Yeah, I'll have to see. This is the original rotor and that has to go back on oh yeah it does go under the rotor this must have the magnets in it all right I'll look at the instructions and I'll get this right all right with these electronic ignition wires they come with like a tiny little bit, maybe a half inch stripped to start with. You really need to just cut that off because they're not going to go through this little boot with them on. And I sprayed the wires and the inside of this boot with a little bit of, uh, what is this, Farm and Fleet silicone. And that helps it go on real nice and easy. I have the boot on before putting it through the holes because you can see on the inside it's a good deal bigger I'm not sure if that's showing and on the outside it's a bit smaller so this has to be pushed through the hole from the inside and I would rather have these wires connected before I do that so now I can get these through and finagle this boot through the hole. Well, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna get these wires through the boot a little bit more and then pop that through and then then I'll cut these to length before putting the ends on them. I'm not sure where this black one goes, but I believe the red goes to the negative on the coil. Let's just take a quick look right here. Uh, no, it's the black wire to the igniter and the red wire, oh, the red goes to the positive. So these go to each one. What I believe I'll do is get some of my terminals and I'll use these spade lugs right here. This cat is just annoying. All right, let me deal with this cat and we'll get back at this. Okay, the wiring is done. Yeah, this goes in pretty easy. Once you get the wires through there, get them about where they need to be and then just pop this through and wiggle it a little bit. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so I looked inside of this I'm guessing this does have the magnets in it or something to that effect but the shape of the inside of this fits the cam down here so I just got to go see I guess it has to go this way and somehow it fits it fits down past this this uh, the electronic ignition unit Yeah, it has to fit all the way down to the bottom. All right, I am going to go look at the instructions, but it has the shape on the inside in there will fit this, this cam down here. It's got like four lobes on it, and this has four lobes on the inside. So it looks like it's going to go down into this metal opening down here and sit right on the top of this shoulder right here. And then the dust cap will go back on and the rotor goes on on the top of that. That's the way it looks. 
and after further thought I am just going to put those eyes on it and I'll cut these to length. One's going to go here and one will be a bit shorter and go right like that. Yeah, this is going pretty good. Alright, I am going to go have lunch and warm up a little bit. I have the instructions for this up in my office, so I'm going to read that. And I need to pick up my electrical tools, my stripper, and other stuff. And then I'll be right back, and we'll finish this up. Alright, I am back from lunch. thought I'd show you the box for this. It's model 1143 for a Delco four-cylinder distributor. All right, so I was correct. This does go over this cam here, and I could just pop it on now, but the video I watched before they put this plate on, they scrubbed up the plate below it because this gets its ground from that plate. So I'm going to take this back off, clean that plate up, put it back on, and before it's tightened, there's supposed to be a spacer in that bag. It's clear plastic. I don't recall seeing it, but we'll see if we can find it. This is supposed, this part is supposed to be spaced from this part. So let me see if I can find that and we'll get going on this. Okay, that's pretty grimy in there. Spritz a little brake clean on here. Yeah, I am really glad I did that. It is filthy in here. Okay, there is no plastic shim in this bag. And I didn't recall seeing one when I opened it. But there's also zero adjustment on here between that screw and it indexing off this pin right here. Zero adjustment, and it's just got like a hair gap there. So I'm guessing that's perfect. Still got to clean this off, it's a little cruddy. And then that'll go on right like that. All right, I'm gonna get this cleaned up and get this done. Okay, that brown crud that I saw in there is not crud, it's a gasket. And this appears to be the original dust cap for this. This is, it, it looks like this is Bakelite. So I'm going to put it on the way it is. And I'll take a look tonight and see if I can find a gasket for this. All right, now I just need to figure out a length. Probably... I don't want to leave these full length. They're just all over the place. All right, I'm going to cut these down and put the ends on them, get them connected to the coil, and then we'll figure out which wires I'm going to put as replacements for these wires and put them on the new cap. And we are almost there. If you're looking for a crimping tool, this Aries crimping tool is by far the best I've ever found. Really good. Okay, let's get these connected to the coil. Alright, I got the plug wires on. Hopefully they're seated well in that cap. I cleaned the rotor a little bit and that indexes onto the top here right like that and then this indexes as well right like that I believe I better go find that washer tonight. I'm going to have to write that down so I don't forget it. Okay, so the electronic ignition is in. Red wire comes out, goes to the positive on the coil. Black wire goes to the negative on the coil. 
I cleaned up the plate inside of here before putting in the electronic ignition. Well, I didn't do it the first time, but I did do it. So, it looks like I have everything hooked up except for the battery. So, I'm going to get that battery in there and find the key. should be on my keychain. And I can't start it because the gas isn't hooked up. Here's the gas right here. Oh, the gas. Oh, I'll have to go see on the other side. I thought I took the gas line off, but I can see it right there. I know there's not gas in the tank. I was going to use the little, the tiny little test tank, but I can put some gas in this tank if I need to. I'm not going to be able to get this started today, but I'm going to at least get that battery in and... Yeah, we'll see. I'll get the battery in and we'll go from there. All right, that's it. I'm completely done with the 12 volt conversion and the electronic ignition conversion. Now it's time to test it. I'm gonna do that tomorrow. I have a bit of gas. This is, uh, it has lead substitute and octane booster added to it because these are from, well, this one is from 1951, I believe and they ran off a much higher octane than what they have these days and no alcohol. So I gotta go around tomorrow, check the oil. I just checked the water, water level's fine. No ice or anything in there. Look at my little disconnect here. This battery is fully charged. So no sparks or anything yet. So that's a good sign, I guess. I'll leave it disconnected until I go to start it tomorrow. That's an, an old school battery disconnect. If you're going to be working on your motor a bunch, these are kind of nice to have because you can just disconnect the battery in a heartbeat like that and then go back and get it connected again. I might take that off. I don't know. I might leave it on. We'll see if the hood interferes with it. I believe the hood comes right up here, but if there's going to be any problems, I'll just take it off. But it's going to be good to have while I go over all this wiring. If it doesn't start right away, I'm going to have to do a bunch of testing and trace all the wires and stuff. Hopefully it just starts up right away. I think the biggest problem will likely be the alternator bracket or the alternator belt. It looks like it's going to rub on the bracket there, but maybe it'll just rub a little bit off and it'll be fine. I don't know. We'll get into that tomorrow. And the carburetor here. I don't think I have to do anything to this. The air cleaner is off. That's that, that hose and that big canister over there. That's a real bear to get on, and I'm not going to put that back on until everything's running nice. And this way I can spritz some starter fluid in there as well. So that's all good. Yeah, this negative was really hard to get in. I had to take all this stuff off to get at it, but it's in there now. Okay. Well, I'm going to take a look at this gas and see if it looks good. I believe it is. And then I think that's it. And then tomorrow I pour some gas in it and try giving it a start.
Woohoo! All right, I'm going to get cleaned up here, but I'll sign off right now. So if you want to see me start this tomorrow, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.